Hey guys, thanks uh, for tuning in today. I know you've been on the edge of your seat since my last video, just anticipating what kind of fish you could use in aquaponics. Now believe me, I know that you could probably find the answer to this question out relatively easy with a little bit of search, but hey, I figured I'd put this video out there for anybody that uh, uh, you know is new. Like I say, this is kind of serious going to be for new, maybe some people have been around for a while, but uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, if on starting my system, and this is what I started mine with, and you've probably heard this before, I'd probably start with goldfish just to get it started. Um, now, the reason being is, for one thing, they're very hard to kill fish, I guess for lack of a better word. You know, they're, they're very vigorous. They can handle a lot of, of uh, water problems. And so if you're new and you're trying to get your feet wet, that's a good fish to start with. You know, they're relatively inexpensive. Um, so you can do a lot, of, uh, a lot of good, I don't know if I'd say experimentation, but you can go through the, through the difficulties using goldfish without wasting a lot of money. Um, now, too, if you decide to just set up a plant, uh, a um, system that's just for getting plant material, you know, vegetables or whatever, then, uh, hey, um, goldfish is an excellent choice for that. Just to keep them right on. As a matter of fact, I would still have some, but uh, the old blue heron ate every single one of those in short order. Um, now, the rest of the fish I want to talk about are mostly fish that you can eat because for me, and I think it makes sense for anybody, if you're going to have an aquaponic system, you know, why not have fish in there that you can eat? Because as you're going to see later on down the road when I start, I'm going to start a, a series called, you hear Capone? That's my rooster trying to talk over me. He wasn't making a peep until I started video. And anyways, hopefully you can see what I mean. Ah, bird. <laughs> He's way over there too. I can't even get to him. Anyways, so if you're going to, like I was saying, if you're wanting to have, um, an aquaponic system it just makes sense to have fish you're going to eat if not i mean there's plenty of other ways to garden and get good vegetable growth and like i said i was talking about i'm going to have a series come up the economics of aquaponics basically i'm going to be doing some really hardcore cost looking you know looking at costs and all that to run a small system a big system and i've already learned quite a bit as a matter of fact and whew, i got some work to do i'll put it that way so anyways <clears throat> another good fish and it's probably one of the most popular is tilapia now but there are some problems with tilapia and, and one thing is is temperature wise you know if some of my northern friends there you go to use tilapia you know you got to keep in mind that the water temp blows if you get blues you could probably go about 48 i've had my water temperature here at 50 and they were still doing pretty good i didn't heat it but i will probably have to if i want to keep them going and i will because they're too small i didn't get them till june but tilapia are very fast growers. I'll, I'll give you guys a video of them. When, hey, can y'all go fight somewhere else, please? Or play or whatever? I'm trying to make a movie here. Anyway, boy, I tell you what. The animals come alive when I come out here. Anyways, um, uh, you know, tilapia is a great eating fish. And you can't really base that. If you ever had tilapia before and you got it from, you know, I'll just say a big chain store. I don't want to put no names out there. They'll probably come back and sue me. But anyways, you're, you're getting garbage. And that's the bottom line. So... Um, just try growing some of your own and you'll see the difference. One of the positives of tilapia, super fast growing. Like I was just saying before I was rudely interrupted by all the barnyard animals. Um, those ones I got, if you look back a few videos ago and it was right in June, they were literally about the size of a pencil head. And now I got some, uh, I mean, they're getting pretty darn close. To, I could eat them, I'll put it that way. Um, so that's tilapia. But you have to check the rules and regulations. And I'm in the middle of building a website right now to get more into some of that kind of stuff. And I'm probably going to put down like the regulations for the states and stuff like that. Because it is a big deal. You can get in some serious, serious trouble in certain places if you're growing tilapia. So you really want to make sure you check on that. Um, you know, reality is if you got some native fish to your area that you can eat and there's no law problems with it, those are good fish to use. Another great fish, catfish. I mean, hey... They're a great eating fish. They grow relatively quickly, not as fast as tilapia. I haven't seen anything grow as fast as tilapia. Now, these fish I'm naming to you now, I've actually had all those in the system. Uh, but the catfish, you know, they're another one. Man, they can tolerate some, not that mine have had a lot of water problem and issues to deal with, but they can definitely tolerate um, some water problems. So, 
Uh, and, they're, and they're a great eating fish. You know, any fish you grow in your own water like this, it's going to be excellent. You know, one thing I'm going to do when I go, before I go to, uh, to um, eat mine is I'm going to put them in uh, uh, just a tank of good water, no feed, nothing. A purge tank is what it's called, just to make sure they get really cleaned out the best they can. Because, uh, you know, tilapia actually drink water through their skin, by the way. So, you know, you want your water quality to be good. That's what I was saying about before about some of the places you get it from. Uh, they've been pretty much farmed in sewers, and so you don't want that so much. And then they're artificially enhanced, colored, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, back to the catfish. Catfish, excellent. I don't know that there's a lot of restrictions on catfish at all. I don't think there are, no matter where you live at. Um, they're relatively easy to get a hold of. Uh, they can handle really cold temperatures, so there's really no having to worry about heating or anything. Um, that's another excellent fish. Um, bluegill or brim, you know, anything like that. I've had those in here. Uh, they do really well. Not the fastest growing, you know, they're kind of slow and maybe I didn't, <laughs> my impatience ain't that great. So, but I had them for quite a while and they grew to be some pretty good sizes and I never had no problems. They're probably a little bit more particular about the water. And I would just say maybe as far as pH shifts go, um, that's probably most fish you're going to deal with. So, you know, brim or bluegill is another great one. Uh, crappie, I guess they call it up north down here, speckled perch, crappy, whatever you call it. You know, those are some good fish. I had those in the system here. And so um, they're really, uh, they did it well. But the only thing about those, you had to get them small to get them trained on pellets because, you know, they're a carnivorous fish. They go after minnows and stuff like that. So feeding them and keeping them fed is kind of a pain a little bit unless you got a minnow farm or something. So uh, they're a great eating fish and they do pretty well. But uh, for those, you know, I, I had some. But I probably wouldn't continue to do those just because of the feeding things you'd have. Um, another great one is trout. Now I want to raise some trout down here, but you know it's so hot, and I do. I've read that you have to keep the water a certain temperature, but I know it gets pretty warm up north in some spots where the trout live. The water gets a decent temperature, I guess, at times. I've heard stories of trout being in water 85, 90 degrees in one of these systems. So, but they're not really locally available for me, really. So it's just. You know, if you could stay with something local, I think you'd be in a lot better shape by doing that. Um, you know, largemouth bass, people have put those in systems. Now, those I have not had in my system. Um, I take that back. I did catch a couple, and I threw them in there, you know, some small ones, and I, I kept them in there for a little bit. Um, but they didn't stay long, I'll put it that way. Uh, they met a higher calling. So that's just a roundabout fish. Now, I'm not even touching on fish species of other countries, um, you know, uh, Rob Bob down there and some other guys in Australia, they used the barramundi and uh, a couple other ones. They said uh, some kind of uh, perch they call it, I can't remember, but uh, you know, those are ones that are to their area. See, I don't even think they can really get tilapia. They can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, don't, I think they may be able to get it, but it's a lot of hoops to jump through. Now, in Florida, and I keep going back to tilapia because that's just a fish I prefer to raise. Blue tilapia, you don't have to have any kind of special permitting or anything like that to have them. Now, other ones, you will have to. Certain kind of, for here in Florida, you had to get an aquaculture license and all that. But, um, and like I say, it varies from state to state. So that's it, guys. So there we have, oh, don't let me forget koi. You know, koi is an excellent fish for aquaponic systems. You know, if you're looking, especially if you're going to grow one for just vegetable purposes, they uh, have a nice aesthetic feel. You could actually grow a system with your in-ground pond, you know, and actually have it come out the pond and kind of actually make it a nice landscaping system and food source. And I've thought about doing one of those, and I may in the future, but, you know, so many projects, so little time. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's hard enough to keep going with what I got sometimes. So that's, that's the rundown fish, guys. Starting off, goldfish. Great eater, fast grower, tilapia. Great eater, decent grower, easy to handle, catfish. And we got brim, crappie, trout, and bass. Um, I may have left out a few, probably have. I mean, literally, you could put anything in there as far as that goes to really raise them. But, you know, me, I'm raising them to eat the fish because I think you got to have that component if you're just even, if you're just even trying to uh, do any kind of break evening, break even on a system or even make, not make money, but just save money. Because that's the point of it. We want good, clean vegetables, good, clean food, but we want to save some money, you know. 
so that's it if I forgot any leave them down in the comments um, the next uh, video I think in this series we'll talk about is just different types of maybe growing media that you can use um, there's definitely an, a tremendous amount of source I don't know we'll find out maybe it'd be something a little bit different than that um, you know types of grow bed setups you know you see me running Dutch buckets I've ran some others and there's pros and cons to both so maybe we'll talk about that give me some suggestions down there in the uh, comment sections looking forward to what you guys got to say uh, thanks again for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're new and y'all have an awesome day bye